Hey YouTube, I planned on making other videos today and I got caught up in all of this political bullshit. It's not hard to do, it's all over Facebook. I tried staying away from the news agencies because they'd always report something on the other candidate and y'all know they're in someone's pocket. Well today I thought I would I'd take a political standpoint, a political view but not on a candidate per se, but on my personal belief on something that's been kind of nagging at me, really. Um, I've been hearing a lot of talk that the Second Amendment doesn't really apply to modern day life, and not a lot of people are doing it, mind you. But I just thought I wanted to put my two cents worth, and that's probably about as much as it's worth, considering I'm not popular or famous. But... The Second Amendment is basically there for your protection, so that you can protect yours. You can have a sidearm if you want, um, an AR, which actually, there is a reason to have those. It's for that minute chance that stuff will go south in a big way, like during the Ferguson riots, when assault rifles were used to defend stores. In all of their years, did you ever expect those people to have to arm up to defend someone's right to live? Someone's job? Someone's life, basically. They didn't get there in time to save a good portion of what was destroyed. A lot of people lost their, you know, ability to provide for their families because of that riot. But those that still have their shops probably still have their shops because someone was there with a gun to defend them. And when you say that the Second Amendment only applies to muskets, it applies to modern day weaponry. I'm not talking like militarized weaponry. Me personally, I don't think anybody needs a fully automatic rifle. That's, you know, that's just my personal belief. Semi-automatic works just fine. And it really doesn't matter the size of the clip. Because you use any rifle for two reasons. You use it either for home defense or for hunting. And the odds are you use it for hunting. Even if you have a shorter clip, you're only going to need one bullet. That extended clip is just in case somebody wants to come through your front door and you need to drop them. You need to defend your home. You need to defend your life. You need to defend. And it's the same with the people that conceal carry or even open carry. They do it because they want to protect. And let's be honest, a lot of people out there today, they don't trust cops. So what's the next thing? Or even what's the first thing that you should have? You should be able to defend yourself while waiting for the cops to get to a scene. Let's be honest, a lot of times, in a lot of places, their ability to arrive at a scene isn't the best. Like, they'll get there, but it's not like it's going to be immediate. And those seconds, they count. So I'm asking you, why do some people out there want to take a shot at the Second Amendment? Why do you blame the NRA or law-abiding citizens, anybody that legally goes out, purchases a firearm, and carries it, who don't shoot places up, who don't get into uh, street gang warfare or gang retaliations, people who don't break the law, who are merely there to protect themselves and others. And those are the people that I hear brought up a lot when it comes to talking about guns in general they're not part of a gang they're just there legally carrying and the likelihood is they'll never have to draw the likelihood is it's going to stay on their hip unused but when the moment comes when it needs to be used don't you think they should have it on hand why not what's wrong with being prepared 
What's wrong with defending yourself or your family? What's wrong with defending strangers? What's wrong with firing back? Well, you just want to be a victim? You just want to be killed without the ability to defend yourself? Well, let's be honest here, folks. Being unarmed in this day and age is not the smartest idea. Choosing to be a victim not the smartest idea. It's pretty much choosing to die in some of these situations. And frankly, I think that needs to stop. Personally, I think it's time people learned how to use guns, learned safety. There was a time in our history when gun safety was taught in schools by police officers. There was a time when there weren't that many shootings. Far less than what we have now. Because there was respect. There was respect of life. And there was respect of firearms. Nowadays we have people that get street cred for killing people. Killing cops. And that's unacceptable. That doesn't make you a man. That makes you a murderer. Killing for the sake of killing is atrocious. And every time I see it on the news, every time I see someone getting shot because they were in a different gang, you're just giving to everybody else a bad rap. Everybody else that wants to legally carry. Everybody else that wants to defend themselves. Because now everybody hates the gun. They won't focus on you. Oh no. Pretty much nowadays, it's the gun's fault. No. It really isn't. Violence is an act of man. It's our thing. I mean, I'm not even sure there's ever been a time that we humans have been on Earth where we haven't been doing something violent. War, or pillaging, or, you know, and every time I, you know, I hear people talking about wanting peace, they think it's going to come if we get rid of all the guns. Well, didn't Europe do that? Didn't Asia? Don't they still have a load of crime in those, you know, in European countries? So what if it's not with a gun? So what if their gun violence is down? They still have a crazy amount of violence over there. What about Australia? Confiscated firearms. Look at what that what happened there. People still dying. Crime is still crazy. Getting rid of guns doesn't get rid of the violence. That's the human aspect. Even in nature, there's violence. So, is getting rid of the firearm really going to get rid of the crime? Is is it going to save lives or just mean that somebody's going to stab rather than shoot? Somebody's going to beat someone to death rather than shoot. Violence is violence. I hate to tell you that. You can't just say, oh, well, gun violence, because gun violence is only a part of it. Let's be honest. People these days, they're beating people up because they think differently. You got people going to the hospital because of politics. Politics. Nobody likes either candidate. People are just voting for the one they think is going to be the least awful. After this election, we got to do something because this is crazy. But until that time, I'm asking you not to affect those who want to express their Second Amendment right. Those who want to do it legally, those who want to carry, they carry because they want to protect. And they want to be there when stuff goes down so that they can put an end to it before more people get hurt. That's basically what's been on my mind. Yeah. Awesome.
Actually, that and a whole bunch of other things, you know. Life's never that basic. Come on. No. Um, let's see. I learned, uh, learned recently how to make applesauce. I mean, I, I knew how to already using a pressure cooker, but I learned something even better than that. It's something almost magical. It's you use a baking sheet. And you, you know, you quarter the apples and you put them with the meat side down with the skin still on them. And you cover that with tin foil. You put them in the oven for, oh, yeah, when you quarter, you got a corn. Just do away with the corn. That's the no. Ugh. No. Core them, too. But you put them in the oven for... 375 degrees for 45 minutes and the skin comes right off. The meat is practically applesauce. It is insane. For all you parents out there that got kids that you want to you wanna be able to give them applesauce without having to pay a fortune or worry what's in the apples, this, this right here, this is the trick. Oh yeah. And I'm not usually a fan of applesauce. But when you get apples that are just a little tart and you add just a little bit of sugar, it's mm, damn near magical. Yeah, let's see what else has been going on. Um, oh, yeah. A uh, little bit about myself further. I mean, like any of you really care. <laughs> this guy just ranted about guns. Uh, I'm a gardener. I'm hoping to someday become a police officer. Someday. Hopefully soon. I mean, I like gardening. But, I don't know, just recently watching everything, I realized that I could go into different fields. I could become an agricultural, you know, what is that, farmer. Sorry, didn't know where I was going with the whole agricultural thing. But I could be a farmer. I'm good with animals. I could go and work at a zoo. But I can already tell that there's going to be a call, a need for people to step up and help their community. And for me personally, I think I could do that best as a police officer. Because we're about to have a serious shortage. I hear about police officers quitting. I hear about them getting fired. I hear about not enough going in because not enough people like the idea of other people hating them because of what they do for a living and that's what's going on right now i'm i'm hearing about riots out there in portland about protests about our police officers and i have mixed feelings about what they're protesting about you know the, the video cams that they they have and i came to the conclusion that the police officers should show the footage after a trial's over it's just like any other evidence, just like you can't talk about it. But once the trial's over, I think they should show the footage just to show their side. I mean, look how many times that would have, you know, helped things. If they had that little camera and they let the people look at it after the trial was over. But there's a legality to it. You, you know, you can't just show people. Because it could actually influence the way that the world act, you know, views what's going on. And frankly, they want to have just the jury members see that. They don't want the jury members to be influenced by what other people say. All right. That's just the way it goes with a trial. And when I heard people when the Ferguson stuff going down, that they were rioting because of what happened in Ferguson out there in Portland, our police officers had nothing to do with Ferguson. Nothing. Our people had nothing to do with that. This nation believes that everybody is connected to everybody else, and the fact of the matter is we are all our own separate communities. We are technically considered a part of Portland, but out here, we are the community in our little clique. And we got our own stuff to deal with. You know, with all this... This rioting and stuff, the, the protests. 
I'm asking you guys, when this stuff goes down, don't get the entire nation involved in the, you know, the, the, the rioting. I know someone lost their lives. That is not something that anybody, police officers included, take lightly. I've seen videos online of cops breaking down, sobbing because they had to take a life. They don't want to, people. They don't. And it's as simple as this. When they tell you to stop and drop, you stop and drop. What happens after that? If they, you know, become violent after you hit the ground, then that's on them. And now that this whole video camera thing is, you know, in play, they're going to get called out on it. They are. And that's something that I appreciate. That's something that I myself called for, along with a good portion of our citizens, that police need body cams. It serves the public and the police. It will prove that they did or they didn't do something, and it will hold everybody accountable. Not just the police. Body cam helped an officer who was being accused by a girl he had arrested and put into detention. He'd been accused by her of rape. And that little body cam saved his bacon. How can you deny that? Like, police officers can't say, oh, well, it's not a good idea. No, it's a brilliant idea. It saves everybody, man. It does. And the fact of the matter is, you know, accountability, it goes both ways, doesn't it? You gotta, you know, the, the people have to be accountable for their actions. And certain police officers, just like certain people, have to be held accountable for theirs. Don't get mad at all cops because there was a shooting elsewhere in the country. Not all cops are like that. A good portion of them are decent individuals. A good portion. And yeah, there are shitty cops. I, I've i dealt with at least one. I give names, but yeah, he's, he's in my town. And I know a lot more better cops. Just... You need... To listen. It's not a race thing. Matter of fact, one of the videos that they, they based a cop's reaction on when it comes to stopping traffic, there was a white guy on one of these videos that got out of his car. The cop didn't want to shoot him, but the guy went back to his car, got a rifle, and shot at the cop and killed him. The cop fired, I think it was like three rounds, when the guy unloaded an entire rifle. That is why you don't go back to your car, people. There's a white guy that did it. It's not race. A white guy set the precedence. No, it is basic understanding that when the cop gives you an order, you do it. Hands on the steering wheel till he gets to the front. Don't mess around in the car. Is, do you want to get shot? That's how you get shot. Even I know that. I got pulled over one time. I was white knuckling it. Because I didn't want the cop to think I was into doing anything wrong. I mean, I have a, I'm have a gardener, right? I've, I don't even have a truck. I got a car. All my tools are in there. Machetes. Got an axe. Just stuff in there that a cop would take a look at and be like, Okay, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to need you to step out the car real slow. And I would not blame him one bit if he had his gun drawn. Not one. Because there's a freaking machete in my car. Like, that's technically considered a weapon. I use it for gardening. I'm very good at it. Washa! You know? Keep that in mind. Don't break into my stuff. Mm. But, and let, let's see, what else has been getting to me? 
Hell, if you're in it this long, stick around. Eventually, we'll knock something loose in my head. Wow, it's been 20 minutes. I'm gonna go out for a run. A um, little more about me. I'm, I'm into weightlifting. I curl 50 pounds each arm. <laughs> That's right. Um, I try running. I'm lousy at it. Uh, I used to be an asthmatic, but every now and then, I think I'm pushing it because I, I get this feeling in my chest like, <gasps> I have have a lung. And then I have to stop. You know, but... I made a switch and I decided to try and lose weight the way my friend told me to. He's just like, dude... There's just no way around it. You gotta do cardio if you want to lose weight. I was like, oh. Me run? It's not a pretty sight. I, you know, I took my running advice from the old knees to chest. Well, somebody's crossing the street slow. You roll down your window. You go knees to chest, bitch. Yeah, I did that, and that's how I tried running. It turns out that's not how you're supposed to run. I look like an idiot for a very long time. Yeah. <sighs> Let's see. Um, I, as I said before, I am into hunting. I know a lot of people out there, especially you vegan hipsters, you little pie in my ass. Um, I know you don't like it, but it's what I do. Uh, doesn't mean I'm good at it. I got my first deer this year. I'm 25. Again, just because I do something doesn't mean I'm good at it. Gardening is one thing. I'm an expert at gardening. You need advice? You come to me. But, hunting, I'm still learning. And the deer are happy about me not being very good. Um, I'm originally from California. I was born in paradise. I lived in, uh, Vina, California, in a little trailer park. Yes, that's right. Trailer trash gold right here. And we had many adventures out there. I'll probably tell you a few when I get super bored. <laughs> Whether you listen, it's up to you. And... I've made a lot of friends in my life. I've lost a lot, too. Um, and in two serious relationships. Been engaged twice. All about the commitment here. Oh, yeah. Problem is, this, they kind of weren't. So, yeah. The second one was a real doozy. That was, that was almost four years being with her. And I miss it. Why wouldn't I? There's something about being taken that makes life a little better. Go to work, you come home to somebody, and it makes all the hard work seem all that better. That you're actually working toward something, working toward a future. And when you lose that, it's, it's tough. I spent about a year... Maybe even a little over the year. Maybe every now and then I even get a little bit hurt now. Getting over it. And me and my ex were friends. Actually, me and both my exes. But you just can't wait around your entire life for somebody to maybe want you back. And... If you try, you're going to lose out. So, you know, boy, girl, it doesn't matter. Keep your eyes open. Don't let your past block you from your future. I'm still hopeful. I mean, why wouldn't I be? I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. I mean... Technically, in the town that I live in, I could 
potentially get stabbed or shot. It happens. We just had a, uh, a murder out here not too long ago. It's not the best town. Full of crackheads, meth heads. Uh, fuckheads. Yeah. Oh, he cussed. <laughs> um. We got a lot of good small town people out here. A lot of people that are tired of some of the same things I am. Tired of government passing laws over our heads without our say-so. Giving themselves raises. Yeah, I heard that. I was just like, I can't do that. Why do they get to do that? This ain't fair. Come on. Well, you give it time. Eventually, the people are going to get the power back. <laughs> You're going to get your pay reduced. And I do believe that our schools, they need some improvement, especially in the town that I'm in right now. I went to the high school here for about a year, and then I moved to another town. And that high school was a lot better. The jocks weren't douchebags. Um, they didn't have, well, I, I did miss a group of stoner kids. I never partook when I was first in high school. But I still hung out with the group. It was pretty awesome. I had my third crush over there. The high school over here. Um, let's see, what else? Mm, yes, I own a ball python and a corn snake. The corn snake's a bitch. She will bite your ass. Especially if you don't, if she doesn't know you. Like, she smells a new person. She's just like, oh, it's on. Your ass is toast. When I first picked her up, uh, she turned, whipped her head around and she tried biting me in the leg. Her name's Candy Cane. I would have named her something else entirely after that. Mm. But she keeps my ball python uh, company. I mean, she's not a ball python, so it's not like eggs are going to happen. So much money. Oh my gosh. But genetically speaking, it's not likely gonna happen. You know, pythons, some species, I think it's a reticulated actually give life birth. And all species of snakes have their own shape or type of reproductive organs, you know what I'm saying? So it's uh it wouldn't be a fit per se. Um, Facebook's pissing me off. I mean, why wouldn't it? We got political problems. We got some douchebag out here. He had a cat, ran off, and now there's some girl after I posted the, hey, if you know somebody with a red truck that's got a blood stain, uh, please contact so-and-so because that douchebag killed... The neighborhood sweetheart cat. And some people are just like, oh, well, it's just a pet. No. I understand just a pet. I understand a cat that'll skedaddle when a stranger walks by. No, this cat was a sweetheart. And this guy hit and ran. <sighs> people like that. People who will not own up to him. It, it was technically a mistake. I mean... Everybody hits an animal at some point. It just so happened that this was a pet. But it was the town cat. This thing would love anybody that came up to it. It wanted pets. It wanted love and attention. And it didn't care who gave it to it. Wow. Don't ever say that about a woman. But when you hit an animal like that and you just drive off... There's an injustice to it. You break somebody's heart. You destroy somebody's family. You know, I lost two cats back when I was in my relationship. Two of the most adorable cats. And it was to an animal, but, you know, it broke our hearts. It's a death in the family. And you're going to treat it like... 
It's a squirrel. Are you crazy? You gotta be better than that. Anybody should be better than that. Oh my gosh, it's been 30 minutes. What? Well, um, politically speaking, I used to be a Democrat. Then Obamacare happened, and it helped a lot of people that I know, it helped people who were struggling, but it also took the middle class a different way. And someone I know said that he, you know, nobody's going to be everybody's favorite person. Well, he wasn't mine, and he kind of ruined the Democratic Party for me. That's my own belief. And I'm not here to piss people off. I'm not here to start a fight or to get you mad, really. I'm actually here because I got stuff on my mind, like anybody. And I made you watch 30 minutes of it. <laughs> no. Um, I'm hoping to get my first handgun this year. Things have been a little bit tight. Uh, I used to live in a hunting trailer, so it's not like life's been the best but I had some friends who took me in, made me part of the family, very happy. And we're all going to go out and rent a place. <sighs> oh, yeah. My brother's dog. Mm. He left Dookie on the carpet. Wasn't no small dookie either. That was disgusting. And I had to pick it up. If you see this, your dog is pissing me off. And also, the whole world knows he's a little shit, so. <laughs> um, let's see. Um... I know how to do all the stuff you need to to take care of a deer. I'm hoping to videotape at some point me tanning the hide. That's going to be fun. That is going to be... Okay, let, let's admit, that's probably going to be very horrible. But you know, at least I'm going to learn how to do something. Make clothes just in case, oh, lo and behold, shit hits the fan. And don't tell me it can't, because Russia's already mad. All right. So is China. And don't get me started with North Korea. Alright. We are not the most well-liked people right now. And on one hand, one political party is making nice with one person, and the other is making nice with the other person, and that's another reason why we're all like, ah, I hate so-and-so. All this hate is going to lead to violence. And all that violence is going to get us absolutely nowhere, except martial law. So people, knock it off. No beating people up because they share different belief. That is unacceptable. Let people believe what they want to believe. And lay off my churches. Lay off the Christian religion. You're making room for Muslims. You're making room for other religions. And yet you go and you say that Pastors cannot put certain things in their sermon. Well, personally, me, I feel like that is dampening my freedom of expression. The government has no place in our churches, just like our churches have no place in our government. That is how it should be. People should be able to believe what they want to believe. If it hurts feelings, it hurts feelings. That's that's the glory of the United States. Not everybody is going to get along with each other, but we should be able to believe what we want to. Otherwise, it's not freedom of speech or freedom of belief. It's not freedom of anything. It's being told to feel a certain way. And the fact of the matter is, no matter how much you force somebody to say something, that does not mean that's what's in their heart. That's just not going to be the way it works. That's why I don't do big government. 
That's why I'm not a fan of big government. That's why I'm not a fan of taxes. That's why I'm not a fan of laws being passed over the heads of the citizens. That's why I'm for community. That's why I'm for everybody playing a role in our nation. That's why I'm for small businesses being able to grow. And the big businesses that are overseas either getting back here or getting snuffed out by the little businesses. I want our nation to be self-sustaining. I want our scientists to work on ways to clean up the ozone so that we don't have to worry so much about this greenhouse stuff. We have ways of purifying the air here on ground level. At some point, I would like to be able to find a way to purify it where it needs to. Because we don't need to go through another ice age in order to get back to start. We don't need to. We are scientifically advanced people. And we should already be out of these fossil fuels. We should already be on our way to exploring other galaxies by now. Where are our flying cars, right? Big business has got us here. What are you going to do? Support the little business. Do what you can in your own community. And don't be a dick. Don't attack other people's rights. Don't say the Second Amendment's for the history books. Because it does have a purpose here in our society. Just like the freedom of speech, just like freedom of expression, just like any freedom. And I'm glad if you are still with me at this point that you are still here, that you would put up with my quirkiness, and hopefully you didn't leave. I don't know if I can tell that. Like, none of you are talking. I don't know whether... I need to work on something, or whether I'm okay doing what I'm doing. This is my first week into it, folks. I'm not a professional. Feedback would be nice. Anyway, I should probably get going. I'm going to watch this first, because y'all are going to be seeing it, and I want to make sure it's 